In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export a statement of cash flows from QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our free test drive file for Craig's design and landscaping. We're going to go down to the reports down below. We're going to be looking for the statement of cash flows. Now, the statement of cash flows probably isn't in the favorite reports because the two favorite reports that will be here all the time are going to be the balance sheet and the profit and loss. Those we would think of as the financial statement reports, the main reports, the principal reports, the primary reports, which pretty much all other reports will basically feed into. At the statement of cash flows, however, is also another primary report. It's part of the financial statements. Now, it's not as used as often as the profit and loss and the balance sheet when you're going back and forth with the data input because basically it serves kind of a different function than the primary reports. In other words, remember that the balance sheet and the profit and loss will, in essence, have all the accounts that are active in the chart of accounts basically in it. So these are the two accounts that you're always going to want to go back and forth and say, okay, what was the effect on these two uh, financial statements? The statement of cash flows is going to be obviously directed towards cash flows. And the reason for this is because you'll recall that the activity, the driving force on the balance sheet and the profit and loss as to when expenses and when revenue are recorded are on an accrual method, which is a great method for comparison purposes. However, uh, it's not, we also want to know cash flows. So considering we're on a, on a accrual method and not on a cash flow method, then we, we can add another report, which will basically give us what we're missing on an accrual method. And that's basically the cash flows rather than ex income and expenses on an accrual basis. So therefore, the, it's going to be under this report statement of cash flows. We'll be under the business overview information where we have the financial statement information, including the balance sheet, the profit and loss report, and right down here at the bottom, statement of cash flows. So again, remember, as we open this up, this is a primary report. This is a financial statement report. However, of the three primary reports, it's not the one that you're going to be using most of the time or going back and forth to all the time, typically, as you do the data entry process. Let's go ahead and change the dates up top. Those dates being, oh, uh, let's do that again. <laughs> 010119 to 123119. We're going to go ahead and run that report. Then I'm going to copy and duplicate our tab up top, as has been our practice, right-clicking on that tab, duplicating that tab, and then it's going to pull to the right so we can make any changes to anything other than the report on the left and then be dealing with the statement of cash flows to the right. I'm then going to close the hamburger so we can see more of our screen, have a bit more real estate on the screen. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. I'm holding down Control. I'm scrolling up. Get it up to that 125. That's where we're going to have it. So here we have the statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows will typically have three sections to it. The three sections are going to be the operating section, the investment activities, and the financing activities. So we have three components, three basically groups in which we will be putting the cash flows in. So the cash flows, obviously, we're talking about the cash going in and out of the organization. The first section is the primary section, the one you're going to be concentrating on most of the time, because you'll note that typically when we think of cash flows, the inflows and outflows have to do with basically our operations, and that would be compar comparable to the profit and loss report. In other words, the profit and loss report is a timing report that, av that basically estimates how we're doing over a period of time, a starting and an ending point to a uh, period of time. And we're trying to see our performance for that period of time. And therefore, we have income and expenses. However, those income and expenses are reported on an accrual basis. And therefore, we don't have the cash flow basis. The operating activity basically gets us back to that cash flow basis so that we can have the best of both worlds. One, the accrual method, which is better for comparison purposes and is in accordance with the matching principle and accrual principles. And the cash flow basis, which allows us to see the cash flows, which is also important. Now, there's two methods you can have the cash flows in. And we do have a course on the statement of cash flows. It's worth basically kind of constructing the statement of cash flows where we go into a lot more detail about it to just learn it from a theory standpoint if you want to get a good idea of it. And if you understand how to build a statement of cash flows, you have a much better understanding of accrual accounting in general. So... We do recommend doing that right now. We're just going to basically go over the report that would be generated, of course, uh, from QuickBooks. 
two methods you can use for the statement of cash flows. We have a direct, we have um, the direct method and the indirect method. Now the indirect method uh, is is less kind of clear if you look at it. I mean, it's less intuitive to look at, but it's more simplified on to one degree in that you're taking an end product already and you're and you're adjusting backwards to it. So from that standpoint, it's it's good. It's also a nice reconciliation component. So a quick summary, what are the two methods? Uh, let's first take a look at a profit and loss report. I'm going to go back to the profit and loss report. We're going to then go down to the reports down below. And let's take a look at our one of our favorite reports, that being the profit and loss report. Let's take a look at that profit and loss report. Let's change the dates up top. We're going to be changing the dates from 010119 to 123119, January through December uh, 2019. We'll go ahead and run that report. Now, the components of the profit and loss are basically the income amounts, the expense amounts, and the difference between the due being the net income amount. If we were then to say, well, this is on an accrual basis, meaning the income items up top are being recorded when things were earned, and typically that's going to be triggered in QuickBooks by the report of an invoice or sales receipt, uh, then these are going to be triggered when they're earned. Now, on a cash method, on a cash flow method, we wouldn't be recording the income until we received it. Those things could happen at the same time. If we're using a sales receipt, if we're a restaurant or something, then they typically do. But if we invoice before we get paid and we expect to get paid at some future point, then they don't. And that's and we'll have a difference between the cash method and uh, the accrual method. So you would think then the statement of cash flows intuitively would make sense to say, hey, let me take these line items, each line item of cash, of income, I should say, and convert it to basically a line item of cash and that on a cash basis rather than an income statement for the cash flow statement. That would be kind of a direct method type of, of, of angle at it. And then we would take the expenses down here. And again, the expenses might be at the same point in time as cash, meaning we might have just written the check at the point in time we incurred the expense and therefore the cash uh, went out at the same time. Or we could have a difference. We could have entered a bill and then we paid it at some future point at which point the accrual method would be recording the expense before we paid the cash and we'd have that timing difference. Well, it would make sense from a direct method standpoint to take the expense items and say, well, rather than having them on an accrual basis, we'll just convert each line to a cash basis, cash flow method. And then the net income down below would be on a cash basis, right? We'd have cash flow from a cash base. That would be a direct method. You can see it's fairly intuitive to, to see that. However, we typically use an indirect method and the indirect method would say, hey, let's start with net income at the bottom. We've already calculated it on the profit and loss from an, from an accrual method. Start with that number and then reconcile, pull out the differences that are on, you know, the accrual differences so that you're left with uh, cash flow on or basically net income on a cash basis. So in that way, you're kind of you're kind of backing into it, and you, you have a couple advantages there. One is that is that it could be less work because you already have net income. You're not trying to change every line item to a cash method when it's on an accrual method. You can just reverse out the accrual components to get back to the cash method, and it's a nice reconciliation. What we'd like to see is a nice reconciliation from the net income on a cash method on an accrual method, and basically the cash or the net income on a cash method. And if you start with net income and then reverse out, reconcile between the two, then you get that nice little reconciliation. For that reason, many times the indirect method is actually required, even if you use the direct method. And therefore, most people, and, and it's not required the other way around. You don't have, if you use the indirect method, in other words, you don't have to use the direct method. <laughs> so most people then are going to use the indirect, everybody that's required to, if they need a statement of cash flows, will typically use an indirect method. And then if they want more detail, add the direct method, which might be intuitively easier to see. In QuickBooks, of course, then they're just going to be, we typically just have the indirect method. That means you're going to start with net income here. And then you're going to be basically pulling out the accrual items. Now, this is a bit confusing because we said that the operating activities are going to tie out to the basically the 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 income statement or the profit and loss report on a uh, a cash method instead of an accrual method but if you take a look at these accounts here they're all balance sheet accounts you're like well why would they why would i be dealing with accounts receivable 
And why would I be dealing with accounts payable when I'm trying to convert net income, income statement account, not a balance sheet account, from an accrual method to a cash method? The reason is because the other side, basically, if, if, you, look at the, if you look at these accounts that are accrual accounts, what happens when you record something to accounts receivable? You, you, if you're increasing it, you debit accounts receivable and you credit income. So one's an income statement account. So in other words, when revenue goes up on an accrual basis, then the other side is an accounts receivable or balance sheet account. And therefore, if you take, that means that the balance sheet account of accounts receivable is an accrual account. If it, if it was a cash method, you wouldn't have accounts receivable. And if you take the change in accounts receivable from one period to the next, that difference is basically the accrual activity that's reflected on the income statement. So to reverse out the income statement accrual activity, you can basically look at the differences in the balance sheet accounts which represent accrual accounting, the primary two most obvious being the accounts receivable and accounts payable, two accounts which we would not have on a cash basis because uh, we wouldn't be recording anything. Like if, if we did work and we didn't get the cash yet, we wouldn't record anything on a cash method until we got the cash and therefore we'd have no accounts receivable account similarly with the accounts payable account so that's basically what happens here we're going to take net income we're going to reverse out all the accrual accounts and that's going to give us the net cash provided by operating activities which you can kind of think of as basically net income on a cash basis in essence so we're and you have this nice reconciliation between the two so this is a basically our net income number this is our kind of net income number or net cash provided on a cash basis, on a cash flow basis. Now, the other two components of the cash flow are items that you'll, you can imagine some items that aren't going to be on the income statements and still involve cash. In other words, uh, if you're on the income statement, you can imagine buying equipment or something like that. If I bought property, plants, and equipment, then I may have, bought, I may have paid cash for it, but the journal entry to buy that equipment would be... Uh, to to credit cash or decrease cash and debit or increase not an expense not an income statement account but a balance sheet account of fixed asset property plants and equipment so therefore we need some other category that's going to be involving those types of transactions that are going to have cash flow differences but aren't part of normal operating activities so you'll note we're, we're not in other words we're going to kind of a, a cash flow method but we're not really we're still not really reflecting on on a complete cash basis for income statement recognition because it's not going to be up here in operating activities even though we pay cash because we're using something for long term use in the future to help us generate revenue long term in the future therefore we're going to put it into another category cash flow went out but it's not part of normal operations because we bought a, a something that we invested into the future therefore that type of cash flow would go down here in investing activities and then we would have the financing activities which have to do with us basically cash flows for financing the business for example if we were to take out a loan and we got money in the business but that loan that money came into the business cash flow in but it's not revenue because we got to pay back the loan the the journal entry would be cash going up with a debit and then we would credit the loan payable a liability no effect on the income statement even though cash is affected therefore we need to put those cash flows somewhere as well and that would be in financing activities and th these are just examples of the transactions that would go into these uh these sections then the difference then is we're gonna we're gonna tie out then to the cash at the end of the period so what's going to happen is we're going to take these these three components which is the operating activities the investing activities and the financing activities that's going to be the change in cash over the period in this case the year of 2019 and then if we add that to to the items at the beginning of the of the year the cash at the beginning of the year that'll give us the cash at the end of the year so therefore this will tie out then to the balance sheet account let's take a look at that then we're going to go back to uh our reports and we're going to go to the balance sheet information let's take a look at our favorite balance sheet report this time and let's change the dates up top we're going to go back up top changing the dates from 010119 uh that didn't work let's do it again 010119 to 121119 and then we're going to run that report let's take a look at the cash number the cash number that we come to up top is going to be the 2001 
and we're at 4,063.52, I think we need to add the undeposited funds. Let's try adding the undeposited funds here. So we got the 2001 plus undeposited funds of the 2062.52. That's the 4063.52. So if I go back over to the statement of cash flows, we're at, yeah, the 4063.52. So remember, you got to add this, the undeposited funds, which is cash we're holding on to, but it's in other current assets because they, QuickBooks didn't want to put it into a cash type account because then it would it would act differently um, than, a, you know, be tracked more like they want to be tracked in a checking account. So in any case, that's going to tie out to our ending cash number. So you can kind of think of the statement of cash flows as basically supporting, like all other reports, something on, on the financial statements, the balance sheet and the profit and loss report, that being the cash number. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. The statement of cash flows is not just simply giving the detail to cash. It's really showing the activity by cash flow. So it's it's going to be so that's why the statement of cash flows really is a um, a financial statement report. One of the one of the key financial statement reports. Uh, however, again, the the profit and loss and the balance sheet are really the reports that that you're going to be using. And going back to most often when you're creating or making journal entries and looking at the effect of those journal entries on the financial statements. Let's go ahead and do our standard adjustments and then we can go ahead and print this out. So I'm going to customize the report up top. We're going to say that we want it to be in the bracketed numbers for negative numbers and shown in red. We're going to remove the pennies as has been our custom. We're going to go to the header and footer and we're going to remove the date and time prepared. Notice there's no uh, basis, accrual or accounting, accrual or cash, because basically we're converting. This is the transfer from a, what would be basically an accrual basis to a cash basis. That's what this report basically does. We're going to run that report. Then we're going to print this report out. And remember that we can do this in multiple, multiple ways. We're going to keep practicing this. We can send it as an email. If it was just one report, but we're going to have multiple reports by the end of this section, we can save it as a pdf file and then attach it with multiple attachments or zip the multiple attachments or we can print it as a pdf or export it to excel i'm going to keep using the printing as a pdf so we can use that cute pdf printer as a reminder so we're going to go ahead and print this out it's going to be printing to the cute pdf printer i would suggest getting some type of free pdf printer program so you can do this it's good practice uh, for any program it's a good tool to have then it's going to ask us where do we want to put it we're going to tell it where we want to put it. I'm going to put it into uh, a, a folder called four other reports, other reports. I'm going to call it the statement of cash flow, STMT of cash flow. I'm going to save that report and then I'm going to export it to Excel. So let's select the drop down and export uh, to Excel. Let's see if it fits on one page. Now I'm going to go to the second tab for the view does not fit on a page. I'm going to go back to the, to the normal view. That then shows us the page break. Then I'm going to minimum. I'm going to make this column a little bit smaller and see if I can get it to fit on one page in that way. If I make it a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, and not quite there, huh? And then I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. You'd think that'd be able to do it. And there we go. Now it's on a page. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go to the save. Going to go to the file tab. We're going to go to save as, browse to see where we want to put this one. And then we're going to get our uh, window here. I'm going to put it on the desktop, course data, and then number four, other reports. And then I'm going to name this thing. I'm going to name it other reports because this is going to be our parent report where I'm going to put all the reports on one tab. Then we'll save it. Then I'm going to print it as a PDF file right now, which only has one file in it. But then we're going to add other reports to it as we keep going in this section. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the print. And we're going to be printing it as a at the cute PDF printer. We will be printing the entire workbook as we practice this. And that's one of the points to doing this in the Excel worksheet that we can be able to put it all on one PDF file. Then we're going to print it. It's going to ask us where do we want to put it then once again. I'm going to keep it in the same spot, this time calling other reports, and then we'll continue adding to it as we add more other reports to this worksheet. Then I'm going to close this back out, and that looks good.